company, give motivational speeches. How are you able to do this? I to Not by myself. I got a team. That young man there is part of my team. I need people. People follow me. People help me. Because I can't do it by myself. I can't keep up with my schedule. I need my assistant to do that. I can't run all these errands. I need my assistant to do that. I need my team to do that. I can't ask people what they need 24-7. I can't answer all my emails 24-7. Because I got like 5,000 of them. I don't know when I'm going to get to that. I can't do that. I can't answer everybody's question on Facebook. I can't. That's why I need a team to tell me the important, the pertinent stuff that I need to be paying attention to. That's why you get a team. So all that, and I like to say this to people, because you know how we like to say, there's no I in team. Correct? Well, guess what? There's no I in success, but there's us. So I need us to be successful. Keep that in mind. Go ahead. Visualize your goal. Let me tell you something. People, are, my friends always say I'm crazy or I'm way ahead of my time. I had a vision. I'm talking about this thing was so bored up into me, like I, I probably could have coughed it out. I saw my vision. I knew my mom was on government assistance. I knew my mom had kids from several different men. I knew my mom had failed marriages. I knew my mom was barely making it. And in my mind, I kept, I kept looking at that. I kept saying, uh-uh, we ain't doing that. I gotta break this cycle. I'm not doing that. I'm not having nobody's bit. I, I told myself, and my friends just laughed at me. I said, uh uh, I ain't in the game of being baby mama. Get your life, honey. I ain't got a problem telling him, honey, you ain't, you trying to get married. What you trying to do? <laughs> I, I don't care if you don't like it. Get my girl, you too. You can push it. Uh uh, I need to know what you're doing because guess what? Time don't wait on nobody. And I ain't about to give you my time. You ain't need to wake me up, honey, because when I walk in the room, my spouse, I want them to say, ooh, that's a bad woman. I sure would want to know what that looks like or what that feels like. That's why right. keep on wondering. And guess what? Because when, when, you, when you exalt all your options and give it to everybody, and then you finally decide to get married, and then your, home, your fiance at that moment would say, come on, baby, because we like to go to a lot of balls and jazz um, shows. So he said, well, come on, baby, put your dress on. We're going to go out. You looking good, girl. You looking good. <laughs> That's okay. You looking good. And uh, y'all walk in the place. Mine ain't going to be this old. Like, years and years and years. And don't, don't get me wrong. I've made some mistakes. I've cheated before. But I've learned. <laughs> See? And that's why I, and let me tell you why I tell that story. Because... A lot of people think women don't cheat, and we do. <laughs> and I was wrong. I was wrong. I should have. Wait a minute. I was wrong. I should have cheated on that guy because he was a great guy, very intelligent guy. And I, I, I mean, he made his mistakes, but we both made our mistakes. But I think he made his mistakes on account of me. So I gotta take responsibilities because if it wasn't for me, some of the stuff that he did. He probably wouldn't have did because he was a good man. I didn't work. He gave me everything that I needed and wanted. I just wasn't ready. I was lost and I was being a follower. Because guess what? I was attached to him, but not really because I was trying to be with my friends. I'm going to the moon too. <laughs> you ain't going to tell me what to do. <laughs> but I didn't realize at that moment how blessed I was to have somebody in my life like that. But God is good because I've gotten better. I've, I got a better man than that man was for me. So I learned from that, which prepared me to be a better woman for the man that I'm with now. So I'm telling you, it happens. You know, we as women, we tend to get beside ourselves. We don't know how to shut our mouth. And I'm, deal I'm, I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm dealing with it now. My spouse tell me all the time, you don't know when to shut up. And you know what I say? You don't know when to shut up. <laughs> and I, and you know, but now, now I can I can laugh about it because I actually see it, you know. And I say, you know what, everybody, get yourself together. So sometimes you got to be able to reflect.
But now I laugh about it, and we, me and him, we laugh about it too, because he said, yeah, man, you don't know how to keep your mouth shut. You, you all, he said, why you always got to have a rebuttal? I said, because it's my mouth and it's a free world and God gave it to me so I can say what I want to say at my mouth. Ooh, she's not Ooh, say it. And let me tell you what, what made me get together. See, because because my spouse is from um, the Virgin Islands and you know the rumor about Virgin Island men. They, like, they are very firm and direct men in these ex-military. So he said, you know what? He ain't even, you know, he don't yell. He's not a yeller. He don't yell. He's very mild-mannered. Um, he said, you know what? You'll get it. And you know what I got from that statement? I sat down and said, girl, you better get your life together. <laughs> Keep on talking to that man like that, like you ain't got no sin. So you got to be in line with yourself, and you got to visualize your goals. I visualize my goal. I visualize being in a successful relationship, even though I made mistakes. I visualize being educated and being able to help people. So I, I visualize my goal. I think I'm living my goal. Is it finished? Am I at the finish line? No. But I'm working towards it. Thank you. And nor the doubts. They gon' doubt you. My mama doubted me. I remember I had a, I was in, happened to be in Walmart one semester. I think I was probably still a freshman at this time. And me and my mom's story, that's a totally different story. We're not as close as most mothers and daughters. Because although my mom had me, she didn't really raise me the community and my sisters raised me and I know a lot of times people don't like to hear that but it's true. You can have a child but you don't mean to raise a child. Having a child is putting a roof over their head and feeding them and clothing them. Raising a child is giving them the tools and the information they need to see in this world and be productive citizens and not repeat the cycle. That's raising a child. And I was raised by many people. Coaches. Teachers. I, I, I tell you I thank God for my older siblings. Because half of the stuff that they went through, they made sure this one, that was their baby sister. She wasn't gonna go through that. My sister made it a responsibility, a requirement in her house for me to get an education. She wasn't playing. I'm gonna tell you a story about my sister. My sister, very intelligent lady. She was the first person that I ever seen went to college. I'm not sure if she finished or not, but she decided to do other things. She was the very first person that took me on the college campus. And when my, my sister took me in when I was in high school, and I was living with her, and everybody, we all know about this FK stuff. And I was always kind of pretty full of myself. I'm still full of myself, but I think I look good, and I hope y'all think y'all look good too. Can't nobody tell me nothing, I don't care. But um, I was that snappy kid. I was very smart, but I was always snappy. You couldn't tell me nothing. We had to take those things, it's called the practice F -cast test, but they really don't count. And I uh, had to take that test. I said to myself, this is some stupid stuff. Why did I take this for? Let me know when the test really counts. So I went in there and bombed it. I just put whatever the heck, whatever, whatever I need to do to get up out of here. I ain't trying to do this. And I took the test, and they took the, they, um, took the they actually sent the scores home. And my sister, I came in the house at this time, life was good. My sister, I was set up pretty good. I had a car in 10th grade, was driving. I had a doorman, lived on the beach. My life was good, you know, so different. I had a great life. All my friends liked to come to my house. And my sister got those scores. And she said, although my first name is Precious, my, a lot of my family called me Dominique because my name is Precious Dominique. So a lot of times you would hear them say Dominique. And she said, I mean, what is this? I said, oh, those are just those practice test scores. Them people be tripping. And I was walking to my room. She said, uh-uh. Come here, cause see you. She said, you, I think you got it twisted. It ain't just no practice. Preparation for the real test. And she said, from the looks of this, you're not prepared. And I looked at her. I said, it's just a practice test. She said, okay, how about this? You give me all your stuff out your room, your TV, your radio. Get in my give me your cell phone and give me your keys to your car. Now what I want you to do is go in that room and look at those four walls until you figure out this test. Because you're going to pass the next time around because clearly you don't get it. And I, I had to sit in that room every day after school. My friends will always come to my house. Maya, I told you I lived on the beach, had a door man, had a nice pool. Stayed all the way up to the top. 
you can see everything. Everybody want to come to your house. Uh-uh. Nobody come over here. You're going to look at these four walls till you can get your life together. So a lot of times people say, take my start to get your life. My friends tell you, no, that come from pressures. Because I always say, you better get your life. Because that's what my sister used to tell me. You better get your life. So I tell you this because I was dumb. Had I taken that test seriously, I would have had my friend. I would have had my radio. I went a whole semester without seeing people. And she even made me learn how to, how to catch the bus. I didn't know nothing about no bus. <laughs> that girl put me on the bus. And I was lost. Now I knew how to get to the mall. The, mall, the bus took me to the mall. And I'm trying to, but I knew I'd live behind the mall. I knew that much. But I knew how to drive home. I didn't know how to catch the bus. I didn't have to catch the bus. She didn't require me to catch the bus. I had a car. I was on that bus at probably 10 30 at night, lost. Because I couldn't do what I wanted to do. So you got to keep in mind people going to doubt you. But there's gonna people gonna be people that's gonna encourage you, like me. The teacher's gonna say you ain't gonna be nothing because they got theirs, get yours. But I'm gonna say, uh-uh, you are gonna be something because I got mine. And I'm gonna tell you how to get it. So don't listen to the doubts because they gonna doubt you. Okay? Embrace positivity. That's a great man right there. I love to see that American couple because that's a positive image of what can actually happen in life. Because a lot of people say as it goes back to doubt. That ain't gonna never happen. Say it too. We live in it. He dreamed it. He thought it. So embrace positivity. When you surround yourself around negativity, you become a very negative person. Very sour. And I used to be like that. That's why I can talk about a lot of this stuff because I was like that. That's part of the reason why I cheated on that boy. And I shouldn't. Because he did nothing to me but try to make my life better. But I had stuff bottled in me from my childhood and I was pulling that guilt card. You don't understand me. You don't know what I went through. Don't pull a guilt card. You Now, none of y'all can pull a guilt card of I didn't know because this map told y'all, you know I told y'all. So embrace the positivity. Embrace that. I mean, just embrace the help, okay? Embrace when someone tells you that you're doing something wrong with that constructive criticism. It's not because they want to hurt your feelings. It's because they want to see you do well. And I want to see you guys do well. I want to see you do your best. That's why I'm here. Because I can go sit in my office if I wanted to and look at my computer and start sitting in there. I don't have to be here. But I'm here because I care and I want you to do well. So I embrace the positivity. Listen when you're wrong. If your teacher say you're not dressed for success, how do I dress for success? Don't dress like me. Don't go in the stores I'm going because you're going to be broke. You're not there yet. Go into Plato's closet. <coughs> nice little store. I shop there before I go to Macy's and things like that. Use clothes for cheap. Summertime they ain't even used. Tag still on it. Go to the Goodwill. Nothing wrong with wearing Goodwill clothes. I don't know where they get this notion from that everything got to be new on popping tags. You're going to be broke keeping up with the Joneses. It's okay to go to the Goodwill. It's okay to go to play those clubs. I work with this lady named Melba King. Melba's always dressed well. Melba don't shop in no, no, no um, high-end stores like me. And she be looking just as good as me. Melba go to Goodwill. <laughs> but me, big old dummy over there in Macy's and Dillard's. She could put on the same dress I got on. She probably got her $5 and I just paid 100 now who the fool? <laughs> exactly. So nothing wrong with going to those different places. So embrace that positivity. Those places are there for you to use that stuff. So use it. Understand fear. I'll be lying if I told you I wasn't scared. When I came to college, see like most kids, my parents didn't bring me to college. I had a suitcase and a Greyhound bus ticket. And I had to get there. I had no money. I was broke. But I know that school sent me a letter and they said that I was in their school. So they got to have somewhere for me to go. Mm, right like that. You need housing. You need a meal plan. And then in order for you to get this stuff, they need your parents 
income tax information. Well, my mama was really down with all that college stuff. So I was having a hard time getting that information. Thank God for a lawyer sister. She went in there and stole it. Because <laughs> she saw what I had. And she didn't want me to miss that opportunity. For many years, my sister would go and steal it. Send it to me so I could have it. Because I was on the verge of divorcing my mom. And my sister said, don't do that. You don't want her to feel like that. And I said, but I got to do what I have to do. She's stopping my path. She said, don't worry about it. It's going to take care of itself. And I remember I had gotten so discouraged. And I told her, I said, I'm, I'm not doing this no more. I'm coming home. She said, I don't know how you're going to get here because I ain't coming to get you. And I don't know where you're going to stay because you can't stay here. You better stay there and figure it out. You better finish school. And that's when I realized I can't give up because that was my own lifeline. When I went back home to live in my own house for a summer after college, she told me I had to pay rent. So that was definitely not an option. And the money. And the money that I did had, I need to buy a car so I could go back to school. So keep in mind, pay attention to what you're doing in your life, the things in your life that are supporting you. Because it was no more, it was no longer about pressures anymore. I had to please these other people now. Because they not even counting on me. So I had to do my job. And there's people that's going to be counting on you. So pay attention. No fear. It's okay to be fear. Have fear. Because all of us going to fear. You're going to get them butterflies in your stomach. Because I remember my first time walking into a classroom. I thought everybody was talking about me. I thought everybody knew that I was poor. And let me tell you what I used to do. And people, I used to make up stories about my family to make them look good and rich. Because I didn't want nobody to know I was poor. I didn't want nobody to know my mama ain't had no education. I didn't want nobody to know that my mama ain't never come to see me because she just didn't want to. I didn't want them to know that. I didn't. So I made up stories to make my family look good. This is the final. Take action. And this is, I'm going to go back to my initial, um, the beginning of when I was going to college. My mom wasn't bringing me to college. It wasn't happening. She told me I needed to make sure she had the money to bring me, so I don't know how that was going to happen. I was 18 years old, just getting out of high school. I had never had a job. First job was the summer when I got out of high school. So I didn't know how that was going to happen. So I bought me a Greyhound ticket to come to orientation. And then somebody else, with dad, Lord bless his dad, brought me to college. But I took that step, even though I was crying and sad, because people, you know, they have parent day at college. My father was incarcerated. I found him my freshman year in college. And he got out, matter of fact, my freshman year in college. And he's been in my life ever since, and I thank God for that, because he supports me in everything I do. He's not educated, but he supports his child. And he had been trying to support me for a long time, but due to family issues, they stopped that because I know he's always a father. In jail, they can be fathers, and that man was a father. They didn't let him be a father, and that's what we have to stop doing. Let these men be fathers. In jail or out of jail, let them be fathers. I don't care if you don't like them. It's not about you. It's about the child, and that's that. So take action. Go for your dreams. Do as much as you think you can do, but know your limit. That's the key, know your limit. It's okay, but you have to first do what? Take that leap of faith. Faith without what? It's dead. So you can dream to be a nurse all you want to, but if you're not making those steps to be that nurse, it's gonna be a dream. You're gonna continue to say, Ms. Mathis, I wanna be an RN. I'm gonna say, okay, well you call me when you get when you're ready to be one. Because I told you what you need to do and you ain't did it. You keep giving me the same story. Okay? So that's what success is. If you have any questions, that's my information. Call me, email me, text me, whatever. Fine. If it ain't working, because you know technology be tripping, find him. He got my personal number. So, no, it's not to say that if I need to find her, you're supposed to help me find her. So, find her. So if you have any questions, ask me. Okay? Thank you for your time.